What we're going to be going over here is the master budget or the really the financial plan here for um, and we're going to do it in terms of a manufacturing company. And through this master budget, that's where you integrate and you coordinate all the activities of the various functional areas of the company here. Okay, so I've got it shown here in diagram form here. So we've got the master budget. That's really broken down between your operating budget here and over in your financial budget. So you have two main budgets here under your master budget. And in our example, we're going to be really looking at this operating budget and look at all the budgets that we have underneath this operating budget. We're going to look, go, just go through the calculations that we'd have to make to determine each of the budgets. But before we do that, let's just look uh, go over here and look at the financial budget and what that includes. So the financial budget, number one, it has a cash budget. Number two, it has a capital budget. And number three, it has a budgeted balance sheet we have here. And those are integrated with our operating budget over here. So with the cash budget, you're going to have collections coming in. And those are going to be coming in from the sales here of the company. And then you're going to have payments going out of your cash budget. There's going to be for selling and administration costs here. And then you're going to have other payments going out for all those production operations. You're going to have for materials, labor, uh, factory overhead, and so forth here. But uh, that's pretty much how our financial budget is, bro are, is broken down between these three different budgets that we're looking at here. But now let's move over to our operating budget here. So with the operating budget, you're really going to have nine sub-budgets. And they have to be prepared be prepared in order here. I've got them numbered one through nine. And we would, in this case, when we talk about prepared in order here, like number one, sales, that's the first thing we have to do because without knowing our sales figures that we're going to have, we can't plan our production. And then without knowing our production, we can't plan our direct materials and so forth. So that's why we prepare these budgets in these different orders here. So, all right, so let's first look here. And I've got, again, laid out on a diagram form here. Uh, and uh, for number one would be our sales. Number two uh, would be the production. We have to plan our production here, know our production budget. Number three would be our direct materials here. Number four, direct labor. Number five is our factory overhead here. And then number six is our ending inventory. Seven is our cost of goods sold. And then eight would be our selling and administrative administrative budget here. And then finally, nine is the income statement. So everything is integrated here. So we really, again, we start out with our sales budget here. We start, we have to know our numbers coming out of the sales department before we can plan all our other activities or other budgets here. So you can see how they're integrated here. And one other thing, uh, and when we're going to be looking at the calculate, we'll go through the calculations really quick here for the operating, for all these operating budgets, just the basic calculations. And just to understand, we're going to have, an, in those calculations, we're going to have broken out here the payments that are going to be have to be made here out of, the, out of our cash budget into the production, various production departments, and also the selling and administration, and also the collections or the sales uh, dollars here that are through collections that are going to go back into the cash budget. So we're going to have those various things broken out here in our calculations. Okay, so you can see what our uh, layout here is uh, for this master budget here, and how it's broken down between the operating budget and then the financial budget. So we'll proceed now into these nine. Uh, budgets that we have to prepare here and we're looking at the calculations that we'd have to make. What we're going to be going through here is each of these nine different budgets that we're going to be looking at. And I have them numbered in order here. So the idea is just to use a pause the video here and jot these items down. And what we're going to be looking at is what's included here for each of these uh, budgets here and how we calculate it. So starting with our sales budget here for our sales or our budgeted sales dollars, that would equal the budgeted units of sales times the budgeted sales price. You do that for each of the items that you're talking about or each of the products you're selling here. And then for the sales budget, for the cash collections, and that would be for the current period cash collections here. That would equal the current uh, period cash sales plus the current period credit sales collected, and then plus any prior period credit sales collected. And number two here for our production budget, that would be the units that have to be produced. 
That equals the budget, budget, budgeted unit sales here from our sales budget, number one here. And then we'd add to it our desired ending finished goods. And then we'd have to subtract our beginning finished goods. Okay, so next here for our number three here for our direct material budget, uh, five different parts here. So first for A, that quantity of material needed for production, that equals the units to be produced times the quantity of material budgeted per unit here. Uh, B, the quantity of material to be purchased equals the quantity of material needed for the production here plus the desired ending material inventory minus the beginning material inventory. And item C here, the budgeted cost of material purchases, that equals the quantity of material to be purchased times the budgeted material prices. And then item D here, this would be the cost of material used, that equals the quantity needed for production times the budgeted material prices. And you do that for each uh, item in, that you're looking at here. And then for E here, the cash payments for direct material purchases, that equals the current period purchases paid in the current period plus any prior period purchases paid in the current period. Okay, next, going over here for number four for our direct labor budget. Uh, first, I have here item A, direct labor hours needed for production. That equals the units to be produced times the direct labor hours budgeted per unit. And then B here, the budgeted direct labor cost, that equals your direct labor hours needed for production times the budgeted rates per hour here. And item five here, factory overhead budget here. Uh, item A here, the budgeted factory overhead costs, that equals the, equals the budgeted fixed overhead here plus any budgeted variable overhead times any direct labor hours needed here from 4A here. And 4A was uh, our direct labor up here. And then cash payments here for the overhead dollars here, that equals your budgeted factory overhead cost minus any depreciation and any other cost that do not require cash payments, amortizations, and so forth. Okay, that's next we'll move on. Now for item six, ending inventory budget. Item A, the ending direct materials here. That would equal the desired ending materials from 3B here. I've got them labeled here from which budget they're coming out of and which letter function under that budget. And that would have been direct materials here. Just to understand that. So we'd have the desired ending materials here from uh, 3B here times the budgeted prices here. And then your B here, the budgeted or standard unit cost, that equals the quantity of direct material required here per unit times the budgeted prices for each plus the direct labor hours required per unit times the budgeted uh, rate here plus any total overhead rate here uh, times the direct labor hours required per unit here. And uh, item C here, the ending finished goods, that equals the desired ending finished goods here from uh, I, two here from the production budget here times the budgeted indirect costs here. Okay, number seven here for the cost of goods sold budget. Item A here would be the budgeted total manufacturing cost. That equals the cost of direct material used here from 3D. Uh, three was uh, what, direct materials, item D here. Plus, you would add to it the cost of direct labor used here from 4B here, and four was direct labor, item B here. Plus, you would add the total factory overhead cost here from uh, a budget five here, or that would be our factory overhead budget here, item A here. And then for item B here, the budgeted cost of goods sold, that equals your budgeted total manufacturing cost here from uh, uh, but a seven, seven A here, that was the cost of goods sold, item A here, plus the beginning finished goods. Uh, and that would be from the pre previous ending or calculated from uh, two here, the production budget, or, and 6B here, that was uh, the ending inventory, item B here. And then you'd have to subtract that from that uh, in any ending in ending finished goods that you have here. And that would be from um, a budget six here, which is the ending inventory budget here, uh, uh, item C here, or you'd calculate it from two, the production budget here and 6B here. Again, that was your ending inventory. Okay, now for uh, I, a budget number eight here, that would be the selling administrative expense budget. 
Item A here, that was your budgeted selling and administrative expenses. That equals your budgeted fixed selling and administrative administrative expenses, plus you'd have to it any budgeted variable rate as a proportion of sales dollars here, times any budgeted sales amount dollars here. And then item B, you'd have your cash payments for selling and administrative expenses. That equals your budgeted selling and administrative expenses minus any depreciation and or other amortization costs that do not require cash payments. And then for our last budget nine here, that was our budgeted income statement. Uh, item A here, that would be our budgeted sales minus our budgeted cost of goods sold. That equals our budgeted gross profit. And then for B here, our budgeted gross profit minus, minus any budgeted selling and administrative expenses, that equals our operating income. And then for C here, our operating income minus any interest expense minus any bad debt expense here equals our net income before taxes. And then item D here, our net income before taxes minus income taxes equals our net income after taxes. So what we did here, we just gone through each of these budgets here and I had them numbered one through nine. And if you go through, these were just the steps of the A, B, C, D and so forth. Those are the steps that we used for calculating those budget. And then if we had any references back to any previous budgets, budget is those were marked here. So the idea is that you would have jotted these down and understand the basics that are going into each of these budgets. Okay, just to what, review what we've gone over here, we started with this master budget, and really what we looked at is the operating budget here. And I've got everything marked in yellow here that we went through with our operating budget. But we also have to understand here uh, those cash collections or the sales, the cash collections on our sales, and they're really part that would go into our cash budget here. And we also have to understand those payments that we'd have to make here through our operating budget here. And those are really becoming uh, our payments here for all those production uh, cost payments here and also the selling and administration payments. And those would be coming out of the cash budget. And then one other thing here with these nine budgets that we talked here under our operating budget, they all come into the income statement here. That selling and administration budget along with your sales budget and all your production budgets here uh, through the cost of goods sold flow into the income statement here. And then from our income statement budget, it flows into our balance sheet budget here. So just to understand the overall flow here, we've got both the operating budget here and a financial budget and they're uh, divided, they're part of the master budget here. And you just understand this flow of how these are intertwined here, how these uh, budgets here have to work with each other and how we uh, use these budget here, budgets here to organize the entire company here and what they're doing here for either through the financial budget here or through the operating budget. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.